Well, welcome everyone to the 2018 Making a Difference Awards for Social Responsibility. My name is Julian Skirm and I'm the university's director of social responsibility and it's my office that leads on and organizes these wonderful awards each year. My role tonight is the same as usual if you've been before, is to get the celebration started. Um, and so before they were about to leave, I wanted to say a big thank you to the choir this evening for providing the entertainment with their beautiful singing. Just so you're aware, some of you were asking questions. They are the Northwest Community Stroke Choir, a local voluntary group made up of people who've experienced a stroke, their families and associated professionals. We know from our own research in speech and language therapy and cognitive neuroscience that activities like singing exercise the brain, aids the development of facial muscles, promotes social interaction and raises mood. Tonight's performance, I think, was a great example of the fun, the togetherness, and the sense of accomplishment that can be gained from singing by people with experience of stroke. So please, and put your hands together once more, a bit louder, please, for the Northwest Community Stroke Choir. Thank you. Let me now run through some housekeeping so we can get things going. Uh, first of all, telephones. Um, please turn these to silent if you haven't done already, but don't turn them off because for those of you that use social media, we'd really like you to tweet about the event using the hashtag MAD Awards. We'll also be live publishing links to all our winners videos instantaneously on YouTube and Twitter tonight, so look out for that as well. Cameras, and um, please note this event is being filmed and it's also being live streamed on the University of Manchester's YouTube channel. So if you have interested friends, colleagues, children, parents, grandparents even, um, please send them the link at the bottom of your program so that they can tune in. Which reminds me to say hello to everybody who is tuning in. We have quite a few already. You're all very welcome as well, those of you watching online. We're not scheduled to have any alarms, so if you hear an alarm, you need to listen to the fire marshals um, uh, and, and leave appropriately in the direction where, which you've been instructed to. Um, also, um, drinks, it, we do have quite a lot left, and these will be available throughout the ceremony at the back of the hall, so please feel free to top up your glasses throughout the evening. Now, information about toilets has to form part of any good housekeeping, so to help with this, I did some research as to what they do in the Oscars during toilet breaks. I don't know if you're aware of this, but in the Oscars, you're only allowed to go to the bathroom at designated times, and when you go to the bathroom, they employ an army of paid people called seat fillers. These people are dressed in tuxedos and cocktail dresses, and they come to sit in your seat when you're in the toilet so that the event always looks full. Um, after very careful consideration of our budget and our ethical code of practice, we decided against adopting this approach ourselves, and you're therefore free to use our designated bathrooms downstairs whenever you want and without fear of losing your seat. Now, Lastly then, just let me give some final thanks before we start. I wanted to say a big thanks to University of Manchester Catering for ensuring that the food you've enjoyed this evening has been sourced from the very best of local produce from around the area, including our cakes, which if you didn't know, were all vegan. Thanks to our colleagues in media services and house services for setting up the hall. It looks beautiful tonight and all of its audiovisual aspects. And finally, I'd like to thank all of the judges um, many of whom are here tonight, and many of whom are from outside the university. You've all given up your time reading and assessing the hundreds of applications that we've had, and we're really grateful for the contribution. We couldn't organize this without you. So that's the formalities out of the way. Before passing over to Professor James Thompson, who's our Vice President for Social Responsibility, and our compare again for the evening, I'd like to show you a short film summarizing the impact this university is having on society.
Good evening, everybody. Um, as Julian said, my name's James Thompson, and I'm really looking forward to this evening, the fourth of these events that we've run over the last four years. Uh, without further ado, the first thing on our agenda is to invite our President and Vice-Chancellor, uh, uh, Professor Dame Nancy Rothwell, who's going to give the opening address. Nancy. So thank you very much indeed, uh, James and Julian, for opening this Make Your Difference Awards. I was so pleased to see the Stroke Association here. Some of you may know that for many, many years I've worked on stroke and have worked with the Stroke Association uh, and their survivors and carers. So it was fantastic to see them here and I, I managed to go and have a chat to them. Um, and uh, also fantastic music. So as you heard, the fourth year we've held this event. Um, you might be here as a member of staff or a student or an alumnus who's entered for an award, or you might just be here to support your colleagues, uh, or indeed you might be an external partner to the university. So I do also want to say thank you, and particularly to our Chancellor, Lem Sisse, for coming along again and giving time to present the awards. And also thank you to the chair of our board, Edward Assel, who will say a few concluding remarks later. So you're all extremely welcome, and I hope you're all as excited as we are about this evening. So many of you will be aware that to our knowledge, we're still the only higher education institution in the UK with a direct commitment to social responsibility as a core strategic goal. It sits alongside our other two goals of research and world-class education. Our focus on social responsibility in part comes from our proud and long-standing history of social innovation. We were one of England's first civic universities that sought to bre break down boundaries and improve life. This university, its predecessor at least, opened up education to the working classes and removed religious tests. It was one of the first universities to admit women. And our people have challenged the norm and changed the world. Christabel Pankhurst, who studied here before campaigning for the suffragettes. Sir William Arthur Lewis, the UK's first black professor and Nobel Prize winner in economics and our first female academic, Mary Stopes, who advocated birth control for women. You have to go far to see students with causes still today, and that should be welcomed. We also uphold the view that universities should, first and foremost, be a public benefit. In these times of much criticise of universities, largely around money in one sort or another, we are at risk of losing what is our core mission, and that is public good. Social responsibility isn't an add-on or something we do on a Friday afternoon when our other work is done. It is our real work, since everyone at this university is contributing, either directly or indirectly, to the aim enshrined in the founding charter and objects. That is, to advance education, knowledge, and wisdom by research, scholarship, learning, and teaching for the benefit of individuals and society at large. We always know that there's more we can do. Um, we're now five years into our social responsibility strategy, and all of you here have seen firsthand the transformative effects of some of our key programs. Let me just give you a few examples of these. On campus, we've pioneered some award-winning initiatives for staff and students. For example, our Ethical Grand Challenges program is supporting our students to become socially responsible leaders and citizens of tomorrow by providing each with an opportunity to tackle environmental, social, and workplace justice issues through their undergraduate studies. Our 10,000 Actions Programme for staff is the biggest environmental sustainability initiative in the higher education sector and has made us the world's first carbon literate university as certified by the Carbon Literate Organisation. We've been recognised as Greater Manchester's leading employer for LGBT inclusivity in the annual Stonewall Index. Across our communities, and indeed there are many communities around this university who are significantly disadvantaged, but we're keen to ensure that our knowledge, expertise and activities help to create an inclusive and fairer Greater Manchester. Our Manchester Access Programme has supported more than 1,800 local students from families where no parent has been to university to study for a degree and progress into professions such as medicine, teaching, law and engineering. 
We're leading an inclusive growth analysis unit in partnership with the Joseph Roundtree Foundation to help make poverty reduction central to processes of growth and devolution in our city region. We've been developing the role of the university as an anchor institution in Ardwick, our closest neighbour. We've supported over 600 staff and alumni to contribute their knowledge and expertise through our award-winning School Governor Initiative. And we've transformed the lives of over 3,000 people by supporting them to get back into work after long-term unemployment through the Works Initiative. This has generated an estimated economic value of £47 million each year. And over a million visitors come to our cultural institutions. Visitors from very, very different demographic backgrounds to those that would normally go to museums and galleries. We're very proud of the Manchester Museum, the Whitworth Federal Bank Discovery Centre in Cheshire and the John Ryland Library in the city centre, which in fact contribute to all three goals. Our equity and merit scholarships have assisted over 200 talented but economically disadvantaged master's students to benefit from a Manchester education. They are supported either by generous donors or by the university, and they come from Rwanda, Tanzania, Uganda, and Ethiopia, and are now back in their home countries as graduates, contributing vital knowledge and skills to their communities. For example, in home building and slum areas, sustainable energy, democratic development, and addressing issues such as malaria and HIV. And researchers in our Global Development Institute and Humanitarian and Conflict Response Institute are partnering with NGOs, government, and the private sector to address issues of sustainable development, peace building, conflict response, and disaster management. These are just a small number of examples, and you'll hear quite a number more this evening. But what's clear is that behind these successes lies the effort, skill, and commitment of many individuals, quite a number of which are represented here today. So tonight is about recognizing and celebrating all of your achievements and those beyond. I should say that at lunchtime, we had the Volunteer of the Year Awards, uh, and some of those winners were here. Um, I have to tell you that you'll struggle to beat the star of the Volunteer of the Year Awards, because one of those winners uh, won uh, an award because of their support for blind people and guide dogs. And the guide dog managed to sneak into the photo shoot at the end and was absolutely the star of the show as I sat on the steps and she put her head on my lap. <laughs> Beat that. Anyway, can I just say thank you to everybody who's been entered for these awards, who's judged them, who's organized tonight, and congratulations to all of you. Whether you win or not, your efforts are really, really valued. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Nancy. And I don't think we've got any dogs that are going to interrupt the proceedings. Uh, but I am your um, compare and host for the evening. Think Jimmy Kamel from the Oscars uh, with a little less hair. Um, and my job is to keep everything running to time to introduce the awards of which we've got many uh, tonight. Now, unlike Julian, there's going to be no toilet humor from me, but I want to make another reference to the Oscars. Many of you will have known that the uh, film that swept the board at this year's Oscars was called Shape of Water. And the director of that film, Del Toro, called it a fairy tale for our troubled times. And this, in many ways, is a fitting metaphor for the troubled times that universities have been facing recently. But for me, this event, the Making a Difference Awards, and the social responsibility work of this uh, uh, university is a fantastic response to those troubled times. Because this is a celebration of all that universities do. And in particular, it's a celebration of all the work that the staff, students, partners, and alumni of this university, the way they make a contribution to the wider world. Another point uh, from the Oscars is that 26 million people watched the Oscars. Now, uh, I know we're live streaming this event. I'm reliably informed that the only thing that sits between us and 26 million viewers is the amount of tweets that you send out about the event. So please get tweeting. 
Now, before we start announcing the awards, I want to invite Lem Sisse, our amazing chancellor, to come up onto the stage. Lem is going to be giving the certificates and awards this evening. Welcome, Lem. Now, I just want to say that Lem is known for prioritizing this event every year. He's come back each time and supported the event. And I just want to ask him, to put him on the spot, a question about why he feels he's prioritized the Social Responsibility Awards. Well, hi, James. <laughs> hi. This is our, this is our, this is our, <laughs> through, the, through the square window. <laughs> um, I mean, I can't believe this is the third, the third uh, time that I've been here for these awards. Um, I remember the first time not quite knowing what to expect. That was when I was nervous, a nervous new chancellor. Uh, straight, f straight out of the box. Um, uh, but what I said then though, and which I'll say again tonight, um, is that our commitment to social responsibility was the reason I put myself forward as chancellor. Uh, and since becoming chancellor, I've been really uh, fortunate to get involved. Mm -hmm. Um, it's not a paid role, just so any of you <laughs> just... I'm paying him for but this. Uh, but, but, uh, but, but there has been, um, yeah, we've got the equity and merit program, which I've helped, or I've um, been allowed to help, actually, to, 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 to come to Ethiopia, which is quite incredible. Just yesterday, Joanna McGregor has uh, appointed the, uh, first five. the first five of those students, and that's a relationship that's going to continue. That's brilliant. Uh, with working with looked after children. The work that people do here with looked after children is quite incredible. Uh, the students that come to the university, but also we do the Christmas dinners here, which is quite incredible. But the actual, the, the ground floor work of looking after that child as they come into here and grow into their adulthood, as well as they, they, they get all of the university, I think it's quite incredible. Um, there's a LEMSISA law scholarship uh, in, the, in the Laura... Uh, department and uh, it's it's just great. Fantastic. Tell us about. Have I talked um, too long? No, you haven't talked. Too, he nev Lem script? never talks too long. Um, <laughs> there will be someone showing me a time over here about that. Um, but tell us a bit about your what highlights from these awards over the last few years uh, before you sit down. Okay. Um, for me, it's about uh, seeing those examples of social responsibility and activity uh, in the university. Uh, in, in, in one event, like the greatest hits or uh, the top of the pops kind of, uh, of social responsibility, that's what this is. And I think, um, yeah, um, I've kind of lost myself uh, there. I that's think. okay. I just walked down a little cul-de-sac. I've turned around, <laughs> I've gone, where am I? <laughs> and, and that's all right. Um, uh, yeah, I've... Uh, I, I'm consistently um, inspired by the work that happens here. And, um, and I'm trying my best to be my best. And uh, I think everybody else here is doing that as well. And uh, that's a daily thing. And, uh, and this is a celebration of that. And I'm kind of pleased to be here for that reason. Lem, thanks ever so much. It's a total pleasure, yeah. <laughs> Am I going down there? No, you're going to sit with it. <laughs> so thank you to Lem. There will be selfies later, we promise. Uh, we've been delighted this year by the large number of entries, showcasing all the excellent work that you've been doing and the real differences you've been making to communities and the world in which we live. Tonight, there will be eight award categories, and we will also be celebrating the 10 years of the Humanitarian and Conflict Response Institute, a groundbreaking research and teaching institute here at the university. Now, don't worry, you will get a short comfort break during the evening so you can top up your glasses, and the evening should finish at about 8.30. So, let me explain how the awards will be announced. Most awards will have people recognized in a highly commended category. If your name is announced, please come up the steps to receive your certificate and then return to your seat. The overall winners in each category will also be asked to come up to the stage in exactly the same way. The only difference is that you'll be asked to pose quickly for an official photo 
<laughs> and selfies and all that, uh, with Lem while we celebrate how you have made a difference. You can also celebrate your win with an additional photo opportunity. So after you've left the stage, if you move down here to the left, before you go back to your seat, you can stand by the banners uh, and have a second photo, which you'll be able to download after the event. For the first time this year, we have also an award voted for by the public. I hope you've taken an opportunity to do this because our phone lines, so to speak, are now closed. The Outstanding Contribution to Environmental Sustainability category will have an additional award decided by these public votes, as well as a winner and a highly commended award made by the judging panel. Four entries for this public vote were shortlisted by the judging panel, and with the help of our colleagues in media services, uh, a short film has been produced about each one for the public to vote on. We will be giving you a taste of each of the four entries throughout the evening, and the winners will be revealed at the end. Okay? Yes, James. Some nodding. Yes. <laughs> Fantastic. So our first award this evening are for Outstanding Public and Community Engagement Initiatives. This year, we have combined the public engagement and inspiring uh, communities categories into one. We are recognizing the outstanding examples where the university engages with the public to share knowledge and enrich lives, and how we inspire and are inspired by our communities locally, nationally, and internationally. As in our past years, this category received the most applications, making up one third of all entries. This clearly shows how passionate we are about working with the public and our community partners to make a difference. So under this broad engagement umbrella, we're making five awards for outstanding local engagement, outstanding national engagement, outstanding international engagement, outstanding public contribution, and then outstanding contribution by our cultural institutions. So, that's a lot. <laughs> so, in order to get through these first five awards, I would like to invite Sheena Cruikshank, Academic Lead for Public Engagement, and Antonio Benitez, the Director of Manchester Science Festival, to introduce the awards. Antonio and Sheena, thank you. Um, just to say that I could keep the toilet theme going, but as a parasitologist, I don't think you want me to, so I'll be on my best <laughs> behavior. Um, so our first public and community engagement award tonight is for outstanding local engagement. This award recognizes outstanding contributions made to our local communities that have achieved demonstrable benefit by engaging with or working in close partnership with communities in Greater Manchester. Tonight, there will be a staff and a student award. We will start with the staff awards. I'm told we're to open the envelope, just so you know. Which is easier said than done. So the highly commended award goes to Caroline Boyd and colleagues for belonging a theatre performance <laughs> that has been scripted to create an experience that boldly addressed perceptions of migration and exposed myths. You're so excited, you're already clapping. And now we have our first winner for the evening, so warm up your hands. For outstanding local public and community engagement, the award goes to Roger Harrison. <laughs> a 
I might flip these the other way around. <laughs> So we are now going to show you a short film about how Roger has championed antibiotic drug resistance. So we know that antibiotic resistance is a huge global health problem and particularly in the UK we know that um, many patients use antibiotics when they don't need them. And one of the ways that the UK government is addressing this is to raise awareness of antibiotic resistance nationally. Roger has been part of the Beat the Bugs um, workshop, which has been running for a number of years. And this is really to address antibiotic resistance with school children. But more recently, this has grown into an antibiotic resistance awareness week of events, including debates, campus-wide uh, recruitment of antibiotic guardians, and also included students in managing and putting on these events. So I think the antibiotic awareness campaign had a huge impact. Essentially, everybody who came to those events were invited to become antibiotic guardians. And as we know, if you sign up to be an antibiotic guardian, you make a pledge to actually spread the word about antibiotic resistance. And so the knock-on effect and the impact of all these um, ambassadors will have a, an ongoing Sure. Huge congratulations, Roger. This is very well deserved, and um, I look forward very much to seeing more about antibiotic resistance on campus and nationally. Next, we have the Student Award for Outstanding Local Engagement. The highly commended award goes to Craig Thomas and colleagues. <laughs> this award is for the STEAM Hub in a pub in the Science Park. <laughs> so now we have the winner for outstanding local public and community engagement by students. And this goes to Joshua Strange and fellow students. <laughs> this award is for the Homeless Healthcare Society, which aims to improve the healthcare of Manchester's homeless population by raising awareness of the medical inequalities and stigmas that they face. And here is a short film about the work of Joshua and the Homeless Healthcare Society. Homelessness in Manchester is a really complex issue. It's been systematic over the last few years um, by Matthew Ferguson and, and people that we class as being homeless. Josh and Matthew and the Homeless Healthcare Society um, set up the society initially to um, try and use their skills and their knowledge and their interests specifically to um, help tackle the problem. So the Homeless Healthcare Society um, starts by offering educational lectures and talks um, to students studying healthcare degrees um, and that enables them to learn more about the kind of complexity of the issues um, in healthcare in the homeless population. Um, they've uh, been able to link really directly with the student uh, community um, to give them opportunities to volunteer um, in the most kind of constructive way. Um, it means that they are able to kind of mobilise um, the student body um, and uh, link them up really closely to charities and services in the city, um, which will hopefully um, continue to support these organisations that don't necessarily have a lot of resources and rely on student volunteers um, to kind of use their skills to help tackle homelessness. So 
congratulations, Josh, and the Homeless Healthcare Society. You've done really well, and you really deserve this recognition for all the hard work that you do. The next Public and Community Engagement Award is for Outstanding National Engagement. This award recognizes outstanding contributions to national communities that have achieved demonstrable benefit by engaging with or working in close partnership with communities from areas within the UK. Oops. The highly commended award goes to Claire Alexander for our Migration Historic website. The website, which brought together 70 historians, museums and archives to create an accessible public education and teaching resource. <laughs> and now we go for the winner. The winner of this National Engagement Award goes to an initiative that brings students, engineers, and musicians together to inspire the next generation of engineers. The winner is the Robot Orchestra Collective. The Robot Orchestra project challenged young people to create their own robots using recycled materials and then to program them to be able to play music. So as part of that they explored different sounds, different recycled materials that would be good to use in, in an instrument. They then used crumble controllers, which was a new type of computing controller that they'd not used before, learnt how to program. Um, and when given the piece of music that the orchestra needed to play, they actually were able to program the robot to play the notes that were needed for the, the tune. The project has had a huge impact and it continues to have an impact. The robot orchestra itself came together, um, supported by a robot conductor, um, and has performed, also toured, and also been a star on social media and television. It's made a difference because it's reached out to so many people and the young people involved have seen what's possible um, with imagination, creativity, the support of others, a whole load of possibilities have been created for them. I want to say congratulations to everybody involved in the Robot Orchestra project. Um, it was a fantastic project for everybody to be involved in, it reached out to so many people and it will continue to make a difference in the future. I must say, as academic lead for public engagement, I am so proud of what amazing work you all do that's being celebrated tonight. So our next um, uh, celebration is celebrating the public and community engagement that's done outside the UK, the International Engagement Award. This award recognises outstanding contributions made to international communities across the world. I'm not doing very well at getting these open, am I? So the first highly commended award goes to a young man who's been working on developing educational tools for teaching robotics to young learners from disadvantaged backgrounds in Thailand. It's Ben Parsley.
Now we have the winner. And this International Engagement Award goes to a team who enables students from winding participation backgrounds to volunteer on educational projects that help vulnerable children living on the streets in Uganda. Not only does the initiative have a transformational impact on our students, but it also gives more children the chance to leave their difficult pasts behind them and move to a brighter future. The winner is Team Uganda. Here is Team Uganda's film. Team Uganda is the university's flagship international volunteering project. It works with a Manchester-based charity, Salve International, who work in Jinja, Uganda, um, and they work to get street-connected children back into education, back into a, a good level of health and hopefully ultimately resettled with their families. Team Uganda sends uh, 14 students, uh, an assistant project leader, to Uganda to support the charity's development through um, community research, helping it uh, integrate more with the local area, work with other organisations and also develop social enterprises which can be used in the business empowerment programme. Congratulations to Team Uganda and everyone who's been involved, particularly the fantastic team in the volunteering department for all of their hard work. And thank you very much um, to all the donors who have supported the project and helped keep it running. I really think it's going to go great places in the future. The next public and community engagement award recognizes the contribution of individuals or teams external to the university which inspire and support the university in the achievement of its goals. And the highly commended award goes to Primer Team. Primary team have worked in collaboration with the Centre for Primary Care to translate patient insight and advice into more credible and effective research. The winner of this award goes to Patient Public Involvement Forum that was established to help embed the ethos of meaningful patient public involvement across research projects and to reach out to the wider community. The winners are the Health e Research Center Patient and Public Involvement Team. Let's gonna play the video from the project. <laughs> the 
Healthy Research Centre, or HERC, was set up as a multidisciplinary group of researchers who are tackling how to use health data to improve health for the nation. And we set up the Happy Forum as a way of ensuring that we got the, the public voice in that research. So we, there are 12 members of the public who form the Happy Forum from across Greater Manchester and they um, were chosen to really help us um, understand what members of the public think about the research that we do. Over the four years since the forum was set up, they have been involved in a number of different ways of getting that public voice into the research. So they have um, a, a small group who acts as critical friends where the researchers can come and pitch their ideas or discuss their grants. They have also been really fundamental in how we deliver our public engagement work. They have uh, worked with us in designing how we interact with the public. And then when we go to festivals, they will be there beside us uh, explaining the use of data with members of the public. Congratulations to the Happy Forum. I'm absolutely delighted that you guys have won. Wow, what amazing engagement projects. They all show what extraordinary work we are doing to make a difference through engaging with communities, not just locally, but across the world. And so now we are on our last public and community award. And this is to recognize the outstanding contributions made by our cultural institutions. In this envelope, I'm going to open seamlessly. The highly commended award goes to the Sustainable Blue Dot Festival and the Jodrell Bank Discovery Centre. And the winner of this award was appointed the UK's first ever cultural park keeper. She developed a new outdoor engagement program to connect gallery visitors and members of the local community to Whitworth Park through culture and health and well-being activities. And the winner is Francine Hayfron. Now a short video about Francine's work. Francine's work um, really addresses the issue that the Whitworth, as the gallery in the park, wasn't really welcoming as many of its local visitors as it might. Um, and particularly visitors who weren't used to maybe coming to a gallery. So what we wanted to do was look at all those people who use the park every day and really think about how we could welcome them, connect to them, understand what made them tick and really sort of bring the art, nature and people together. So she spent a lot of time outside in the park um, getting to really understand who was using that park and there are all sorts of different groups but then also really starting to think about what sorts of activities could she do that would engage those people. So everything from developing large scale festivals and frost fairs that really used the park and brought art, nature and people together. And she really has developed a whole way of working that is quite unique. So she's not only the UK's first, she's also the world's first cultural park keeper.
Francine, um, absolute congratulations. I am so delighted you've won this award. You have taken the role to places we had never imagined, and some of the work you've done in the park has been truly transformational. I'm delighted for you, well done. Fantastic. Congratulations to all our winners and particularly thanks to Sheena and Antonio for giving out the first awards. Um, it's now time to give you a taste of the first of the shortlisted environmental sustainability public vote projects, the Sustainable Travel in Academia. Our project, Sustainable Travel in Academia, uses evidence and then action by us as academics to understand how significant our carbon footprint is from our academic activities and then to demonstrate that we can actually have good academic careers without such a high carbon footprint. We've sat behind our computers with our calculators and understood the science and there's been a lot of work been doing that now since probably since 2005 really. Um, the next thing we've tried to demonstrate is that actually we can and act differently as academics. So quite a number of us here within the Tyndall Centre at the University of Manchester have changed how we go about doing our academic day-to-day -day activities. To date, there's been a small core team of us who've worked on these issues. That's Alice Larkin, Sarah Mander, Kylie McLaughlin, John Bodrick and Ruth Wood and myself here in, at Tyndall Centre Manchester. And um, although we've had a fairly significant impact, we've got to take that now beyond just the universities to companies, to councils, to, to governments, to the EU, um, and, and wider internationally. Congratulations to Kevin and all the team for making the shortlist. If you can give that round of applause. And now on to our second award category, which is Outstanding Contribution to Equality, Diversity and Inclusion. I would like to invite Patrick Johnson, Head of Equality, Diversity and Inclusion, and Dawn Edge, Academic Lead for Equality, Diversity and Inclusion, onto the stage to present these awards. Patrick and Dawn. Good evening, everyone. And it's a real pleasure to be here this evening, I think particularly to celebrate equality, diversity and inclusion in light of some of the things that have been going on um, out there, thinking about Me Too, Windrush and other things happening out there. I think it's for us, for Dawn and I, it's a delight to uh, present these awards this evening which recognise equality, diversity and inclusion across the university. The first highly commended award goes to Robert Appleby and the Tactile Collider team. Their work in making some of the most um, exciting and high profile uh, physics research accessible to the visually impaired. The second highly commended award goes to Stephen Ash and James Nasri. This is for the Racism at Work project which documents the nature of contemporary workplace racism um, in Britain. And the winner 
of this outstanding contribution to equality, diversity and inclusion award goes to an oral history project which recorded the legacy of partition of, of India and Pakistan in 1947. Memories of Partition was delivered in partnership between the University, Manchester BME Network, the Royal Exchange Theatre and the Akbedola Race Relations Centre. And the award goes to Harriet Morgan Sharmi and colleagues from the Manchester Museum. So now we're going to show you a little bit more about the Memories of Partition project. The Memories of Partition project was a great attempt to capture the eyewitness accounts of that dwindling generation. As some of us would know, the 1947 marked the watershed in Indian history when India and Pakistan evolved out of the Great Partition of 1947 and the two countries were created at that moment. The team went out uh, to uh, talk to people in schools, in community centers, in religious centers, and gather together the memories from uh, various groups of people. This resulted in an exhibition, and uh, it, the exhibition itself is a great demonstration of the willingness of participants to share with a broader audience you know, very intimate family histories and family heirlooms that they had brought over with them. It's extremely valuable to capture these memories uh, for the younger generations of South Asians that we have now living in Britain. This was a great opportunity for them to actually learn about 1947 and what it meant for the countless people who lived through it. Congratulations, Harriet, and the rest of your team for putting on such a brilliant show. Uh, which was so meaningful for not just the South Asians living in Manchester, but also for the wider audience of the region, for them to understand what 1947 was all about. Well done. Lem's still talking to them. So, we're all... <laughs> so congratulations to... That's okay. <laughs> Congratulations to everyone uh, for those amazing projects, and thank you also to Dawn and Patrick for handing out the awards. Now on to the second project that was up for the public vote. This is called Give It, Don't Bin It. So Give It, Don't Bin It is a citywide campaign aimed at engaging our 80,000 students to donate unwanted items as they leave halls and homes to charities. The project aims are to reduce landfill, increase recycling and reuse rates, and to encourage us to be more socially responsible with our waste items. So we're actually donating unwanted items to a charity so they can use that to help fund life-saving research in order to help us tackle one of the biggest killers in the UK. Since 2012, 500 student volunteers, including myself, have helped to put together over 20,000 donation packs for students across Manchester to ensure they understand how to donate correctly to the Manchester Central Food Bank and the British Heart Foundation. This project has raised the equivalent of £1.3 million. This money has funded CPR training, defibrillators, heart start schemes, life-saving research and more. Fantastic and inspiring work that we've seen so far. Now our next category is Outstanding Teaching Innovation in Social Responsibility. And I would like to invite Professor Clive Angnew, our Vice President for Teaching, Learning and Students, to introduce this award. Clive.
just been added a post-it note by Julian that says, Clive, your presentation should be like my underwear, brief and uplifting. <laughs> Julian, really. I'm really pleased to be here to present this award, which recognizes innovation and in teaching where learning has enhanced social, cultural, or environmental impact. In this category, there are three highly commended entries and one overall winner. No drum rolls? I mean, it's very quiet here tonight. Come on, let's have a drum roll for this. Yes, come on. Let's. Thank you. In the highly commended award, the first goes to the aerospace group design, which challenges students to apply their technical skills to tackle real-world problems and become socially responsible engineers. Please can I invite Mosava Nabaway and Ben Parslow and colleagues to come up and receive their award. The second highly commended award goes to a year-long series of events, training and assessment that have been designed and delivered to embed patient representation and involvement in the clinical immunology master's curriculum. Can I please invite Joanne Pennock and colleagues to please come and receive their award. And the last highly commended award in this category goes to the Manchester Q-Step Centre, which is part of the national initiative to promote the step change in quantitative social science training. Jackie Carter, please come and receive your award. <laughs> and turning then to the winner of this award, who has been addressing the major issue in the Northwest dental health inequality. Our dental students are providing essential treatment to low income and homeless patients as an integral part of their training. The aim is to improve the dental health of some of the most vulnerable members of our communities and to train graduates who are committed to socially responsible practice. The Outstanding Teaching Innovation in Social Responsibility Award goes to Raj Ariat Ratan and colleagues. Please come up Raj and receive your award. Everyone really deserves access to dental treatment, but for many members in our society, they don't get that access. So for example, in deprived communities, they don't have um, full access to dental care. Now the work within the Division of Dentistry aims to tackle some of this health inequalities by providing care for some of the most vulnerable members of our community. Um, and in doing this, we hope to ensure that our graduates are 
um, socially responsible and are practicing in a socially responsible way. So our students provide essential care to low income and homeless patients as an integral part of their undergraduate training. Um, they do this through either the emergency dental clinics or out in community projects. In addition to this, a growing number of our students are taking part in volunteer projects, both locally and abroad. And through this, they really are addressing global oral health inequalities. The work that Raj and his team put into ensuring that our students are socially responsible practitioners is absolutely fantastic. I'd really like to congratulate them on winning this award. It's very well deserved. Congratulations to all the winners and thank you ever so much, Clive. Uh, you're now uh, no doubt getting the gist of this because this is going to be our third uh, film on the environmental sustainability public vote. Uh, and this is called The 12 Green Days of Christmas. The 12 Green Days of Christmas campaign was really an alternative to thinking about about how we might celebrate Christmas in a way of appreciating our friends and families without having to buy lots of stuff. Each day over the 12 last business days up running up to the Christmas closure before Christmas, we decided that we would send out a daily email filled with practical tips and ideas for staff and families to just think about how they might celebrate Christmas in a way that didn't involve wrapping, excessive paper, packaging, ordering online and that sort of thing. We found the campaign inspirational. Um, every day there was a new theme that we could explore and links made it really helpful to find information quickly. This campaign really encouraged colleagues to think about the environment at a period when we usually spend a lot and waste a lot. The one thing we know is that Christmas is going to come back year after year. We love to celebrate this time of year and we would love to roll this program out we're already thinking as a team how we might roll this out with schools, how we could actually put together a toolkit, uh, make the, the guidance really simple for teachers to maybe run something similar with their students uh, within their classrooms. So this would be uh, something we'd like to explore with anybody um, who's willing to help us take this forward. And now for our fourth award of the evening. This is for Outstanding Benefit to Society Through Research, and I'd like to invite Colette Fagan, Vice President for Research, onto the stage to introduce this award. Colette. Good evening. I'm delighted to present this award, which recognizes success in collaborative working partnerships and knowledge exchange activities which have enabled our research at Manchester to deliver significant benefits to society. In this category, we have two highly commended entries and two winners. The first highly co commended award goes to a team who have worked with Crawford Healthcare to successfully explore how unique forms of silver might be applied to chronically infected wounds. Have you guessed who you are yet? I'd like to welcome the team of Andrew McBain and colleagues to come to the stage to collect your award. The second highly commended award also goes to a team who've worked jointly with Sheffield University 
on the Industrial Strategy Commission. This joint project was to ensure that the left behind areas were not overlooked in the government's industrial strategy. So please, Alex Waddington and the Policy at Manchester team, I welcome you to the stage. The first winner in this category is for Emerging Research Impact, which sticks with the austerity theme. It's for the project Everyday Austerity, a project which uncovered the impact of austerity policies on everyday life for families and communities in Greater Manchester and empowered groups and communities to tackle the social injustices which arise from this circumstance. So please, I welcome Sarah Marie Hall to the stage. Sarah. And now we have a short film about Sarah's work and how it's made a difference to communities in Manchester. The Everyday Austerity Exhibition is a presentation of the findings of Sarah Marie Hall when she was observing the impact that austerity was having on our local communities. Um, and what she did, she came at it in a really different way and she looked at the minutiae of people's lives. She, in an engaging, non-threatening way, she listened to their story um, and she got the best out of those communities because what she told was a story of challenge, yes, of penny pinching, of worrying but also of empowerment of, um, of communities pulling together and for that she needs to be applauded. Hey Sarah, well done, um, congratulations on being nominated. I'm not surprised, it's a fantastic project. We're going to hear and see this for years to come. Uh, thank you for sharing it with us and all the very best for this evening. And the last award in this category is the winner for the Outstanding Benefit to Society Through Research. This award goes to a team who work with a national lottery initiative that aims to improve young people's mental health by providing significant new insights into mental health and how these insights are already shaping policy and practice. So, Great pleasure. I invite Neil Humphrey and the Head Start Learning team to collect your award. And here is a short film about their work.
Neil and his team in the Manchester Institute of Education are looking at the impact that Head Start is having on the mental health, resilience and well-being of children and young people across the UK. At the moment, one in four children and young people are at high risk of mental health issues. Head Start's looking at the way in which we can provide better educational support to facilitate them to achieve their educational capacity. The Head Start programme is a complex programme working across diverse communities with young people and schools across England. Professor Neil Humphreys and the Manchester Learning Team are helping to um, collect and assess that data, bringing it back to schools and local areas so that they're better able to tailor the support within each local area. This scheme, for example, is being used by the Ministry of Education's mental health policy team to actively enhance policy across the, the UK. And what's fantastic is the success of the project has led to further funding this year, which means that the project is now impacting a further 120 schools, directly making a difference to the educational attainment to somewhere in the region of 28,000 young people. So this is the Manchester Institute of Education with Head Start directly addressing a national healthcare issue. It's a fantastic achievement. Congratulations to Professor Neil Humphrey and the Manchester University Head Start Learning Team. This is but fitting recognition of the incredible way you're making a huge impact, a huge positive difference on so many children and young people. Congratulations. Thank you, Colette, and congratulations to everyone for the amazing work. And now to the final project that was up for the public vote, Project PLUS by the Centre for Primary Care Green Impact Team. At the Centre for Primary Care, our Green Impact Team carried out an 18-month Project PLUS where we had a series of monthly lunches and quarterly campaigns to improve environmental sustainability. Well, our, our main aims were uh, first to, to target key priority areas that can have a negative uh, environmental impact. Uh, our second aim was to actually uh, promote the health benefits of being involved in uh, environmental sustainability services. And, uh, and third, also to celebrate our successes. Uh, through our events and activities, we encourage the 70 members of the, our first centre uh, to uh, climb the equivalent of Mount Everest by taking the stairs instead of uh, the lifts and make at least three quarters of journeys to work using sustainable means of travel. We were also able to raise £285 for charity. We are continuing with another Project Plus and we're continuing to raise awareness and change behaviour around environmental sustainability. And we're now doing this on a wider scale by helping to set up and mentor other Green Impact teams. So now our last award in this first half of the evening. And this is for outstanding contribution to social innovation. I would like to invite Tony Walker, Director of Enterprise and Business Development for UMI Cubed, to introduce this award. Tony. Okay, <clears throat> okay thanks very much, James. Um, so tonight's award is for recognising outstanding projects or enterprises that have the potential to demonstrate the creation of a novel or innovative solution to a social problem. So, the first highly commended award goes to Jonathan Green and colleagues at IMPACT. Um, IMPACT is a novel early stage intervention for parents with children with autism. So, Jonathan.
And the second highly commended award goes to Samaya Tahiri Musavi for Urban Chain. Urban Chain is a blockchain solution that is aiming to um, alleviate the problems of fuel poverty and fuel poor households and for other solutions in the poverty area. So I'd like to welcome uh, William Luff, who's going to collect the award. Unfortunately, Samaya can't be with us this evening, but thank you, William. So, I'm pleased to announce tonight's winner of the Outstanding Contribution to Social Innovation um, goes to somebody who's made ac easily accessible and a GIS tool that has been used by several hundred volunteers to physically find and map hidden homesteads and roads in northern Uganda. These co-produced maps that then allowed medical teams to deliver health care to places that weren't easily identifiable, but by combining the technology with the manual intervention, they're able to deliver much needed care. Um, and the winner is Jonathan Hook for Hookathon. Thanks. So we're now going to see a short film about Jonathan's project. So in most of the global south, maps are really not very good. The villages are simply not on the map. But emergency uh, efforts depend totally upon knowing where people live and infrastructure. The map is a central part of the infrastructure. And Johnny's project, the Huckathon, um, was mainly to rectify this in one particular context in the aftermath of the conflict in order to allow resource to flow and allow the, the emergency support mechanism to actually work. The Huckathon involved 100 people getting together in the same room at the same time, having fun, eating pizza, whilst they're adding to the open street map of North Uganda. By adding the villages to the map, it's possible to actually plan uh, the post-conflict relief effort much more effectively and what better way of doing it than students in most of the time on their hands contributing to the map. Congratulations Johnny, absolutely brilliant. We all really enjoyed it and I think it did a hell of a lot of good, it made a difference. Thank you, Tony, and congratulations to all the winners. Um, every year, we aim to highlight a particular university initiative. And this year is the 10th anniversary of the Humanitarian and Conflict Response Institute. The Humanitarian and Conflict Response Institute was set up in 2008 by colleagues across disciplines such as history, medicine, development studies, and drama. And over the last decade, it's grown to become a leading global center for the study of humanitarianism, global health, and international disaster management. From the original four students in 2009, HCRI has now taught almost 1,000 students on undergraduate, masters, and PhD programs. Together with UK Med, a non-governmental organization, HCRI has responded to disasters and epidemics across the world, including the devastating earthquake in Haiti, 2010, and the Ebola outbreak in Sierra Leone in 2014. HCI, HCRI also has long-standing humanitarian collaborations with organizations such as Save the Children, the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies, Médecins Sans Frontières, and Minds Advisory Group. In 2016, HCRI became a collaborating centre of the World Health Organisation. Now, over the coming year, HCRI invites you to share in a programme of events that celebrate its 10-year anniversary, its achievements, and importantly, looking toward the future of humanitarianism. I'd now like to show a small video about their work.
it all began with a conference, and I think if I remember correctly, the conference was called War in Our, in our in Time. Our, no, in Our World. War in Our World, you're right. And uh, we, we already had some humanitarians, we had some, some many of the elements of, of what is today's HRI, but, but we didn't have the medical. Because I think you, you brought the no, medical. Yeah, we in. didn't have the medical. I was invited to a meeting with you at the Stopford building, and there was Tony and a lot of elderly white men, and <laughs> me as a junior <laughs> academic, and uh, the only woman. And basically, at that meeting, I think it became very clear it was you who was really interested in developing this global health focus in a more humanitarian, environmental perspective. And then you introduced me to Bertrand, and we met here. Yeah. in the yeah. Christie Cafe. Well, that was in June 2008, and we met two days after you returned from China. So whoever it was introduced us said, oh, here's Tony, he's just, just back from the earthquake uh, in China. And he said, oh, what, you know, how was that? What did you do? And I said words to the effect of, well, <clears throat> well, I'd like to think we did some good. And then you turned to me and said, well, how do you know? <laughs> <laughs> and so I was feeling a bit fragile. I thought, what? So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so we entered into a lively discussion. We did, yeah. And, <laughs> did, and I remember you getting a piece of paper out and we sketched out a five year plan. As one did at the time. As one did at the end of it. And the, and the end of it was there would be an institute. <laughs> yes. There was the China earthquake in 2008, yep. which is at the beginning of our initiative. And I think uh, the, big, the big breakthrough is that we interviewed the victims of, yep. uh, of the earthquake. And that they told us uh, stories that nobody had heard. Mm -hmm. So there were some really interesting uh, human stories there. And I think that that's that helped us gel the medical and, and the humanitarian in a major way, I think. I think our alumni are really a legacy I think we can be immensely proud of. So a lot of them have really gone on to do really fascinating things. I, I think our students are the ones who matter because we really want to change the, the humanitarian system. Yeah. And if you want to change the humanitarian system, you need to change the leadership. So I'm hoping that our students yeah. will get to those yeah. positions of leadership in the next 10 years. I'm still, I'm still very, very excited by it, yeah, yeah, actually. No, I was 10 years hence. Yeah. Talking yeah. about it is really good, yeah, actually. Yeah. This is really <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, it's good to reminisce, actually. Just let me find that five-year plan. Uh, <laughs> you still have it. Oh, you still have it. <laughs> I'm sure Tony and Bertrand have got the five-year plan somewhere tucked away. Oh, it's, yeah, it's on the table over there if you want to look at it. Um, but I'd now um, like to invite Anissa and Ben to the stage to share their stories of being part of the Humanitarian and Conflict Response Institute. Anissa and Ben, thank you. Thank you very much, James. And you've actually stolen a few of my lines, I must say, so forgive any of the repetition. It's James's fault, not mine. Um, so my name's Anissa Jafar. I'm um, an emergency medicine practitioner in training, and I'm also undertaking a PhD at the HCRI. But Julian wanted me to mention something, um, which is probably quite fitting for today, that we first met um, in 2001. He says 2001, I say 2000, but you know, we won't argue over a year. Um, I was a year 10 student on a widening participation summer school um, and so it's quite a privilege to be able to be here in this capacity presenting so it's a bit of a full circle story for the wide, widening participation program so I think round of applause to everybody here who's involved in that. So that was me being off script and I'll go back on script now. So since its inception in 2008, HCRI has grown around three central priorities. The first priority is teaching, to respond to the demands of a sector in profound renewal and transformation, to teach a range of future practitioners, medical students and professionals a range of disciplinary perspectives on the world of humanitarian aid, disaster management and peace building. Over the last 10 years, we've developed face-to-face, -face, online and collaborative postgraduate courses with NGOs as well as a massive open online course taken by thousands of people worldwide. We currently have our re postgraduate research program, six postgraduate talk courses, including a collaborative course with the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies, IFRC, and two undergraduate courses. We'll soon be offering a new 
collaborative course with Médecins Sans Frontières, MSF, and the Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine. The second priority is research, to research aspects of humanitarian practice, disaster management, or conflicts in collaboration with the best university institutes and academics around the world. Over the last 10 years, we have undertaken research projects which have provided a new outlook on emergency aid, raised new perspectives on Europe's post-war refugee crisis and subsequent humanitarian action, and contributed significantly to interactive displays of controversial and complex topics, which are now part of the Imperial War Museum North permanent main display. An example of one of HGRI's current research projects is our Emergency Medical Teams project, in collaboration with the Hong Kong Academy of Medicine, which will accelerate the development. There's a line missing, well, that's fine. <laughs> Again, I'll blame James. Um, I'll move on. The development of an international verification and certification process of disaster response training based on World Health Organization standards. HRI is a WHO collaborating center for emergency medical teams and emergency capacity building. As a collaborating center, HRI will focus on three key areas. One, support to the emergency medical teams office at WHO. Two, capacity building in disaster prone countries. And three, research in attacks on healthcare. This is the kind of institute HGRI is, at the centre of the action, at the centre of the debate, working to the future to make a difference and having an impact. The third priority HGRI has grown around is engaging with NGOs, to engage with frontline NGOs and organisations to enrich our teaching and our research and report on our findings. Over the last 10 years, HGRI has worked with most world-leading NGOs, but has very close relationships with Save the Children, MSF, International Alert, the IFRC, the British Red Cross, Minds Advisory Group, Oxfam and Handicap International. Many of our PhD students have worked and are working with and through NGOs and are helping HGRI to bridge the gap between academia and practice. We have worked together with Save and ALNAP towards a World Humanitarian Summit in 2016, we currently collaborate on several PhD theses and produce work which meets, meets humanitarian needs. Hey, bringing these together the disciplines of medicine and the humanities to achieve these goals, HRI aims to facilitate improvements in crisis response on a global scale, whilst providing a center of excellence for practitioners in emergencies and conflicts. Hello. Um, I'm Ben Walkling. I'm a postgrad student on the International Disaster Management course in the HRI um, Institute. HRI grew fast um, from a cohort of four students in 2009 to its current size of 253 and two PhD students in 2009 to its current size of 22. The first four students were coming from medicine, the military, the humanitarian sector and from the um, humanities. This is still very much who we are today. Studying, students studying with the HCRI can expect to share the classroom with those who have volunteered with the Red Cross in Geneva, the IFRC in Sierra Leone, with Médecins Sans Frontières, Doctors Without Borders in Egypt, as well as NHS workers, military, military personnel, pharmacists, even accountants and musicians. HCRI students come from 69 countries across the globe. HCRI students come from a variety of backgrounds, from humanitarian photography to, to the police or UN peace forces. HCRI students work in a multitude of settings across the globe, in the UK, the US, Barbados, Sierra Leone, India and elsewhere, in local and national government roles, in non-governmental organizations, in humanitarian medicine and healthcare, the armed forces and the charity sector. PhD students from HRI now work in universities, NGOs and large organizations around the world. Universities including Coventry University, OP Jindal Global University in India, as well as our very own University of Manchester. Organizations including Save the Children, K International UK and Air Security Group, to name but a few. Yet each co cohort has its own identity, energy and spirit. We are the loudest at graduation ceremonies, ceremonies and we are keeping in touch across our courses. Our aim as students is to investigate, analyse critically and engage with a fast 
changing disaster management and humanitarian environment. We are enjoying the opportunity HRI offers, including work experience projects, research trips in countries including Uganda and Rwanda, and learning from each other, from the rich variety of backgrounds and experiences we bring to the cohort as peers. Not all of us will become humanitarian professionals, but, as, but we will carry in future the ethics and spirit of HRI in our new workplace. The, this anniversary is an opportunity for us to meet as predecessors, the alumni of HRI, and to develop our community at events including film screenings of Pili, which is a groundbreaking collaboration between filmmakers and the women of Minono, uh, Tanzania, whose real stories the film is based upon, and who make up the ensemble cast of non-actors, 65% of whom are HIV positive, as well as a PhD symposium showcasing the research of HRI's current PhD candidates and a whole host of other events to come. The future of HRI is to grow our community of alumni. HRI wants to change the world of humanitarian aid and disaster response. We are the ones who will do this, and hopefully we will do it in the spirit of inquiry we have acquired in Manchester. Thank you. Fantastic. Thanks ever so much, Anissa and Ben, uh, for a truly inspiring interdisciplinary international institute. Um, congratulations to everyone from HCRI for the last 10 years of work, and of course, here's to the next 10 years. <laughs> Our next award uh, this evening is for Outstanding Contribution to Widening Participation. I'd like to ask Stephanie Lee, Head of Widening Participation and Outreach, and Esme Ward, the new director of Manchester Museum to the stage. Esme and Stephanie. Hi, good evening everyone. Um, we're both really delighted to be presenting this award tonight. I'm particularly excited to be standing alongside the new director of the Manchester Museum and long-term champion of widening participation. So this award recognises outstanding contributions to widening participation activity locally, nationally and internationally, which have been developed and delivered by staff and students from across the institution. The staff category recognises activity which takes place outside of the central widening participation team. And I think this is really important as the nominations reflect the breadth of work taking place and the shared commitment to reducing gaps in access and student success for students from underrepresented groups. So the first award is for students and there are two highly commended awards. The first highly commended award goes to a project which aims to educate, motivate and inspire students from BME backgrounds by providing the tools for them to start thinking about their career. I'd like to welcome Sajo Siku and the Student Inspire Network to the stage. I know you're all refreshed after the break, so keep clapping. That's it, keep clapping. You've all had enough wine, water. So that was excellent applause. I'd like to see the applause coming until they actually get to Lem on the stage. So that's the way to do it. Um, the second highly commended goes to a student who has campaigned tirelessly to increase the visibility of relatable female role models in science. 
I'd like to welcome Rhys Archer to the stage for Women of Science. Unfortunately, we thought Rhys wasn't here, but she might have slipped through the registration team. So we thought we'd still welcome on stage, but here to receive her award instead is Rachel Bailey. Thank you very much. And now for our student winner. The winner of this award has worked as a widening participation fellow and a Manchester Access Programme tutor, which has enabled her to make a difference by engaging and interacting with a wide range of people. In particular, she has been an advocate of encouraging female students to engage with science and engineering. I'm absolutely delighted that this winner is now a member of my team covering a maternity leave, although she wasn't in the team when the judging took place, so we haven't broken any rules. Now, this is a double celebration for this person this evening because she had her viva this afternoon and she passed. <laughs> So, a very emotional winner of this award is Dr. Emily Cooksey. So while Emily cries over that, let's watch her film so she can cry a little bit more. Our challenge here at the university, especially in, in engineering, is trying to encourage the younger generation of students to be involved with uh, STEM subjects. And what's great about Emily is that she puts the the passion. I mean, she knows a subject area, um, but it's how you then relay that to the younger generation. She did an experiment around chocolate in a lab. I mean, who doesn't like chocolate? Everybody does. Um, really get the students engaged and showing how you can scale up uh, within engineering. How is Emily making a difference? Well, she's really having a big impact on hopefully uh, making our future engineers aware of the opportunities that we, they have in STEM, um, making it enjoyable, um, in fact actually making it sound cool um, and uh, hopefully encourage the next generation of, of, of engineers for the future. And Emily, this really is fantastic news. Um, you know, all that hard work that you, you've put in over the years, how you've really engaged with everything and anything that's been thrown at you, how you've been able to adapt to everything. I'm really, really proud. I've known you for over now five, six years, and I've seen you grown in confidence, in stature over the years, so just a big well done. Future looks bright. Um, the next awards are for the outstanding contribution to widening participation by staff. And the highly commended award goes to a project, a weekend field course to Malam Tarn, which enabled 50 students from underrepresented groups to explore and be inspired by biology, careers, and university life. The award goes to, uh, the, sorry, the highly commended award goes to Natalie Gardner and Suzanne Verstappen.
the staff winner of the Outstanding Contribution to Widening Participation Award actually goes to someone I overheard in the toilet earlier saying how nervous they were. Um, so it's someone who created a collaborative STEM event for pupils in Cumbria called the Infinity Festival. It aimed to inspire the whole school community through exciting talks and workshops. The award goes to Anne Knott from the Dalton Nuclear Institute. Um, let's see what Anne's been doing. In Cumbria, they're trying to increase the uptake of STEM, and the Infinity Project was the way that Anne Knott came up with of tackling this problem. The project was um, essentially a science fair, um, because it didn't just aim to inspire the pupils, it aimed to inspire the the parents and the carers, so the whole community was aware of how they were trying to raise their aspirations and that was really what was unique about it. The projects had a massive impact so um, it's really inspired whole, whole school communities. It's really now embedded in Cumbria so it could just run sort of ad infinitum. I think at something like 95% of pupils that attended it said they really, really enjoyed it and were interested and excited by it and I think 84% said they'd now consider science and technology as a sort of career or an academic interest. Congratulations Anne, you've really made an outstanding contribution to inspiring communities in Cumbria. So we haven't finished yet and um, we've got one more award to give out in this category. Um, the judges wanted to recognise um, a particular um, person um, for their long-term commitment to widening participation. So this person has designed and delivered and managed the university's longest running widening participation initiative within the School of Social Sciences. First established in 2001, he has obtained, obtained teaching time for academics from every undergraduate discipline in the school to deliver the courses each year, reaching over 850 pupils. This special award for continued commitment to widening participation goes to Tom McKinney. <laughs> Fantastic. Congratulations to Tom and all the winners, and thanks ever so much to Stephanie and Esme. Um, now, the penultimate Making a Difference Award tonight is for Outstanding Professional Support Service and Library Support for Social Responsibility. I'd like to invite Will Spinks, the Registrar, Secretary and Chief Operating Officer to the stage to introduce these awards. Will. So thank you, James. And as Registrar, Secretary, Chief Operating Officer and Head of the Professional Support Services, I'm delighted to be here this evening to make this award. 
This award recognises social responsibility, innovation and impact in the university's professional support services and library support services. And across the university, there are about 4,500 staff working in the professional support services in the library. So the awards that we're giving this evening are very much the best of the best. We only have three awards, two highly commended and an overall winner. The first highly commended award goes to the 10K Purple Wave Team. Can they please come up to the stage? And if you want to be part of this year's uh, Purple Wave, you can either run or I'm told you can walk in the Purple Wave as well. So just see Vicky and the team if you'd like to participate. The second highly commended award goes to Daryl Holt for all his work for Francis House Children's Hospice from his cafe outlet in the Shuster building. Unfortunately, Daryl can't be with us this evening, so his colleagues Tracy and Sadie are collecting the certificate on his behalf. So could Tracy and Sadie please come to the stage? So we come to the winners of tonight's award. Um, the winners run a national campaign with STEM organizations and businesses, universities and schools to inspire those aged from five years old and above to be scientists and engineers. The award goes to Dr. Lynn Bianchi and the Great Science Share Team. a short film of the team's work. One of the big challenges in social responsibility at the University of Manchester is in who we engage and how we engage different audiences. So the university is very good at doing secondary schools with a view to recruitment, but doesn't do as much with different uh, ages and with different members of society. So some of the activities that took place included a big event at the Etihad Stadium which had very large attendance where primary school children in particular were encouraged to share their own learning of science and to sort of give an overview of that to all the other visitors. And also they had um, events for teachers, particularly primary school teachers, so sort of CPD type events where they could learn from different scientists about different ways of engagement. So the way that um, Lynn and the Great Science Share have really made a difference uh, in this context is they've really empowered the children themselves to actually go out and become the people who tell other people about science, which sort of shifts that dynamic away from it being everything's in the university, everything's with scientists, and the science is really for everyone and for everyone to share in local communities. So I just want to say congratulations to Lynn, the team at Siri, and everyone else involved in the Great Science Share. Very well deserved, fantastic project.
Thank you, Will, and congratulations to all the winners. Um, and as Will said, remember there is still time to join the Purple Wave and sign up for the 10K. Um, the final Making a Difference Award tonight is for outstanding contribution to environmental sustainability. As I mentioned earlier this evening, as well as the usual judging awards, this year we have our first ever People's Choice Award in this category. We may not have the glamour of Hollywood uh, of their People's Choice Awards in LA later this year, but this award has been avoid, uh, voted for you, uh, the, the, the wider uh, Manchester uh, University of Manchester public. Now I'd like to invite Professor James Evans, the university's academic lead for environmental sustainability, and Emma Gardner, the head of environmental sustainability, to introduce these awards. James and Emma. Thank you very much, James. Uh, good evening, everyone. There's uh, only four awards left. Uh, we're really pleased to present these awards tonight, which recognize innovation and commitment to uh, environmental sustainability. Uh, it was great fun judging these, uh, I think it's fair to say. In fact, they were so good, we created three awards rather than two. Uh, so first up, the judges' awards. We'll be making awards to recognize individual contributions and also institutional contributions. So the first, the awards to celebrate the contributions made by individuals. highly commended award goes to a project to improve environmental impacts and promote the health benefits of engaging in environmental sustainability activities, the Centre for Primary Care Green Impact Team. Uh, and the winner uh, of this category is uh, a team who ran a campaign to help staff across the university make green choices while celebrating the countdown to Christmas. You've seen them already on the videos we've been drip feeding into you. The winner is Haggis, the Humanities Administration Green Impact Stewards. Now for the awards to celebrate institutional contributions. Stuck. The highly commended award goes to Tyndall Manchester for sustainable travel in academia. The winner for outstanding institutional contribution goes um, for a collaborative campaign that aims to encourage reuse and recycling across Manchester by motivating students to donate unwanted items. I'm delighted to welcome onto the stage Al Clark and Kirsty Hutchinson.
And finally, the moment you've all been waiting for, the award that's been voted for by the public. I'm going to ask Lisa to bring up the envelope with the winner. <laughs> it, it was someone in the library with the, uh, with the candlestick. No, it was, in fact, give it, don't bin it. There's no video, <laughs> but welcome. Brilliant. Thanks to James and Emma, and congratulations to all uh, the winners. Um, on some occasions, uh, like this, we like to recognise someone who's made a significant difference. And this year, we would like to give a special award for lifetime achievement. We heard earlier about the fantastic work of the Humanitarian and Conflict Response Institute and what it does, um, Institute does, and the person receiving this Lifetime Achievement Award has played a vital part in its success. He is a professor of international emergency medicine at the university and a consultant in trauma and emergency medicine with almost 30 years of experience in international emergency humanitarian assistance. Born and bred in Manchester, he attended the University of Manchester to study medicine. He is an expert in the humanitarian field and a specialist in the allocation and practice of medical aid, organising and leading medical support to natural disasters such as earthquakes in Haiti and China, Typhoon Haiyan in the Philippines and the Ebola outbreak in Sierra Leone. Major incidents, conflicts and complex emergencies throughout the world. This person has made a substantial contribution to the planning and delivery of aid, which has earned him both an OBE and perhaps unique to this university, a Soviet order um, for the personal courage in his work after the Armenian earthquake. Never forgetting his roots, he continues to support the next generation of humanitarians without his outstanding work. He's also a fantastic guitar player. The university's special award for lifetime achievement goes to Tony Redmond. Now, we're going, to see, um, we're going to see a short film to embarrass Tony further. Tony's work is about responding to international um, disasters. Um, working um, within the global health field, um, supporting often the most vulnerable people in the worst environments, worst situations possible. Tony's been in every um, earthquake and conflict zone since 1988. Everybody knows Tony. He has the connections and the influence to make a major difference in the humanitarian sector. And that's, that, I think, is invaluable for an institute such as ours, which implies that people have field experience as well as research questions. Tony's just, he's just a truly inspirational man. It's hard to actually put it into words. He's so altruistic, one of the few truly altruistic people that I've ever met. Um, but he inspires people in, in many ways. I think he's just a perfect role model. When I first met Tony, I was incredibly impressed. His energy, his enthusiasm was very compelling. I was incredibly impressed with the work that 
that he'd done in emergency relief and the way that he had maintained this emergency register of nurses and doctors ready to go out and deal with an emergency should it happen anywhere in the world. Um, he never gives up. For example, on one occasion, I know that he was on an international mission and he, he suffered a serious injury on his back, but he knew that if he discontinued himself, that then the whole mission may have failed. So he continued despite being in, in a lot of pain. And I think not many people would do that. Tony has been a whirlwind and extremely inspirational because Tony not only contributed to the shaping up of HDMI, but he also developed his own NGO called UK Med. And UK Med uh, has changed um, international policies as well as British approaches to disasters. I'd like to thank Tony and I'd like to congratulate him for his special award. Very well done. Thank you again for your contribution. I'd just like to congratulate you, Tony, for the amazing work that you've done. And it's been a, a truly um, pleasurable time working with you over the years. Well done, Tony. It's a fantastic achievement. Congratulations on your award. You thoroughly deserve it. Many, many congratulations to Tony, a truly well-deserved award. Now that was the last of our Making a Difference awards for this evening, but before uh, we go, we want to share with you what happened earlier today when we held our annual Volunteer of the Year awards for social responsibility. The winners receive a university medal for social responsibility in three categories. And this year's winners were, the Alumni Volunteer of the Year was Michelle McHale for her various voluntary work, such as setting up raising aspirations to address knife, knife crime with young people and local communities. The Staff Volunteer of the Year is Sean Pert for setting up introductory and intensive voice and communication workshops for trans and non-binary people. And the Student Volunteer of the Year is Charlotte Orty, who is president of Manchester Outreach Medics Society, working to provide free workshops for six formers from disadvantaged backgrounds wishing to apply for medicine. Now, I know this is a bit embarrassing for them, but I think uh, Michelle, maybe Charlotte is here, but if Michelle is here, would you mind standing up? And I think you should deserve a round of applause. Michelle's just at the back. <laughs> to give you an insight into the outstanding work of Michelle, we'd like to show you a short visit video about her work. Michelle, she's been involved in volunteering work and her involvement is to make many hundreds of people's lives better. It, it's just all I've ever known her doing and she's brilliant at it. Michelle does lots of things. Um, she's been involved in family court proceedings as an advocate. She's helped with Sendis Law through parent partnerships, family parent partnerships. She runs play groups. Um, she's done the Knife Crime Initiative and um, she runs a food bank. I think Michelle's work with the food bank has encouraged more and more people to recognise that there's a need um, for people to be receiving more support. I know, I didn't think there was a lot of people that struggled with food. I thought everyone was all right until I actually volunteered at the food bank. Then I thought, then Michelle made me realise there's a lot of people that actually need help. She makes people feel safe to be in that situation and to be asking for that kind of help and she shows them respect. The Knife Crime Project is raising awareness of stabbings. Um, it raises awareness of how it affects people. Her role there was to manage the project, to support the family that have been affected by knife crime, and she is working in conjunction. 
and then partnership with the police. She worked closely with families and the police force on a knife amnesty and she encouraged young people and those involved in knife crime to um, bring forward their knives and the knives are all collected. There's a big angel made with all the knives that people have been stabbed with, um, killed with and uh, they've had uh, people have had the name of loved ones engraved in it that have died by a knife. I know personally knife crime is a big problem because I got stabbed myself and all I was doing was like, I was walking. That's all, literally. I was just walking across the road with my girlfriend and her sister and then a car tried hitting us. We ran to hide and then you just get stabbed for no reason. I, I know how much of a big problem it is. So in order, because I've done the knife crime project and I get stabbed myself, so I've seen both sides of how a knife affects people. Michelle is very approachable and very caring. And that motherly love she extends to the young people. And I encourage them make them see that there's more to life than carrying knife. I think Michelle deserves to win the award because um, she knows what she's doing, she's focused, um, she knows how to work, a, work around an obstacle or she likes to go through it, but when she gets it focused that she wants to do something, she strives to achieve. So she wants to achieve that goal and then go for her next goal and then want to get it further and further and further until she can get the best that she can get out of herself and out of other people. It's making a huge difference in the community because of her calm way and reliability and willing, ready to help. Around her community, people know her and they know her as a caring somebody. I don't think we would have survived some of the difficulties that my family has been faced with if it wasn't for Michelle. She's been, um, she's been there for us throughout three educational tribunals. She's supported me hands-on with my severely autistic son. She's been a friend to me, a friend beyond belief. And she's been there for my other two children and us as a family. And we absolutely love her to bits. Many, many congratulations to Michelle, our Alumni Volunteer of the Year. Um, as you saw the uh, amazing angel piece of work created by an artist from Urmston, and I therefore want to put Esme in touch with Michelle to work out how to bring it uh, to the museum or to the university at some point uh, and install it in one of our buildings. Uh, so that's something to arrange afterwards, please. Um, so, thank you to Lem for being here and for spending the evening with us, uh, speaking to every single one of the award winners and for giving out the certificates and the awards. And also thanks to Suzanne for keeping him in check. Um, and you're now invited to leave the stage. A round of applause for them both, please. And before we end this evening, I'd like to welcome Edward Astle, Chair of the University's Board of Governors, to the stage to conclude. Edward. Well, hello, everybody. Thank you, James. Thank you, Julian, for the impeccable organization of this extraordinary event. Thank you, Julian, for lowering the tone. There's not really any, any way to finish this. It should just carry on, I think. Uh, but unfortunately, it falls to me to at least begin the end of the proceedings. And I was trying to think, as I sat here listening to it all, how lucky all of us are to be associated with an institution that encourages each of us to be mad, making a difference. And we've seen just how many ways we can all be mad, from antibiotics to robotics from conflict zones to classrooms, from the campus to Kampala, from the natural world to the social or the cultural. And actually in Francine, our cultural park keeper, she combined all three of those latter things. Tonight's a reminder therefore that an institution like this, the University of Manchester, really can make the most amazing 
difference, wider than the general public, or indeed many of our stakeholders can understand. It's also a reminder that these amazing efforts are team efforts. Staff, students, external partners, we've seen all the examples in the award that LEM has been so diligently handing out. As the chair, I can reaffirm the obvious point. The board is absolutely committed to the university's social responsibility agenda and uniquely proud of that agenda. As chair, I'd like to add my personal thanks and congratulations to all of the highly commended um, winners who've all been on stage tonight. These are not just personal accolades to each and every one of you and the teams we've seen. They're also an inspiration to those who will follow you next year and beyond onto this stage. Fortunately, it doesn't fall to me to quite finish the proceedings. So we've had the privilege of having Lem with us tonight to give the awards. In fact, the university has the privilege of Lem as our chancellor. Some of you may know that at last year's awards, an invitation was given to Lem to develop a poem for you to perform called Making a Difference. And we're going to finish. This was such a powerful story. I think somebody took the initiative to make a film of this. This is the appropriate end to these great proceedings. So thank you very much. We are shaking and breaking and waking indifference. We are quaking and taking and making a difference. We are working, observing, recording, researching. We're in, we're conferring, subverting, referring. We're counting the minutes, the moments, the loss, redressing the balance, addressing the cost. We are citing and fighting. It's all in the writing. The spark is igniting. In dark, we are lightning. We're breaking the brackets. The fact is, the planet's in rackets and rackets of rackets in brackets. The systems, the victims, the damning, the scamming, the biased predicting, the beating and banning. We teach through closed doors. When none listen, we hear. When heads turn away, we volunteer to relentless censors, the damned and defenseless. Our words are the action, the louder reaction. We count the cell in illness we name the unnamed we count the invisible we make change we work we stand tall we rise up to be counted we work above all we climb mountains the skills we exchange the breaking of chains the action sustained the makers of change we are shaking and breaking and Waking indifference, we are quaking and taking and making a difference. Thank you, Edward, for those thoughts. Thank you, Lem, for the poem, and all the people who helped to make that very inspiring video. Well, that nearly concludes the evening. We had a huge number of entries, and everyone who has been up on stage this evening to have their work recognised should be really proud. The judges had a really tough job. It's been, I think, a truly inspirational evening. And I'd like now to extend my own thanks to the judges and everyone who's been involved in organising tonight's event, particularly my colleagues in the Office for Social Responsibility. Ju Julian, Julian, yeah, I know him. Marie, Lisa, Suzanne, and James Hopkins, if you're watching with your new baby. So I hope you enjoyed this evening. Thank you for coming and have a safe, socially responsible journey home. Good night. <laughs>